Let dancing replace marching. Buy that extra wall bond today. Buy wall bonds where you work or bank. And also, make sure to try Anderson light bulbs. The only light bulbs that your house will need. They will light up your house forever. Anderson light bulbs with a lifetime warranty. And if you have a special dame in your life and she's ever feeling down, ever feeling blue, make sure to screw in an Anderson light bulb and she will do anything for you. They're three for a dollar at any of your local hardware stores. Anderson light bulbs, the only light bulbs that you will ever need. I'm John Renton with the retro view of The Prowler for 1981, directed by Joseph Zito, who did Friday the 13th, the final chapter, Missing in Action, Invasion USA. The latter two starred Chuck Norris before he became a meme, and also Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Pretty much the last decent entry in the Friday the 13th series before it totally went downhill. Jason went to hell, and then they resurrected him, so we did Freddy vs. Jason with that early 2000 CGI, and Jason in space! Still waiting for them to do a good Jason movie. It's been a while since they've done one. You could argue that the 2009 edition wasn't bad. We did get a lot of tits, but we get tits in this. Hooray for tits. Anyway, this was written by five different people. Three people did additional dialogue. What is additional dialogue? Well, stuff like, hey, you, get off that, and why not? If you are a longtime MST3K fan, maybe you'll get that. I don't know. Glenn Leopold, not to be confused with Kate and Leopold because neither <laughs> neither Meg Ryan or Hugh Jackman are part of this. God, that movie is really goddamn weird. Anyway, nevertheless, two scared to scream and various kid TV shows, like a lot of them. And then Neil Barbara, not to be confused with Hannah Barbera because the names aren't even close. Too scared to scream Rock Odyssey, not Rock DJ, not that uh, <laughs> Robbie Williams song. And also more kid TV shows like Yogi Bear stuff and episodes of the Smurfs and whatever. Yeah, people that went on to do kids TV shows and had done kid TV shows before wrote this about a guy in military fatigues going around killing people because of something that happened 35 years ago. No, really, that's the entire plot. That is literally the entire plot of this. It isn't bad. <laughs> it's not necessarily great. The makeup effects are by Tom Savini, which actually does make sense why the gore scenes are pretty well done because Tom Savini is quite a genius at getting the most out of, well, anything cheap. Uh, we had Vicky Dawson playing Pam McDonald. We had Mark London played by Christopher uh, <laughs> Goutman. Man, and the way he walked, I think he did have part of his last name in his knees, if you know what I mean. Lawrence Tierney, who played Mayor Ch uh, Chatham. Chatham. Chatham, you're Chatham. You're Ch oh, God, these things are all Chatham. Oh, God, they're, my, they're really Chatham my legs here. I'm trying here. I'm really, really trying here because I don't really have a whole lot of material for this. Sheriff Frazier, played by Farley Granger. <laughs> Not Lug Granger because there's no ZZ Top. There is a band that plays in about three or four different scenes here. Cindy Wettrub, Weintrub, close enough. She plays Lisa. And then there's Lisa Dunsheath. You done Dunsheath, your sword. Aye. And then also there's David Sider, uh, Siderholm. So nevertheless, we have, uh, we go to 1945, we see old stock footage of soldiers arriving home. We're in Avalon Bay. In 1945, there's a dance. There's a guy, uh, a girl that had broken up with her significant other because, that, an unnamed significant other because it ties into the movie later. She breaks up with him basically because they had been both waiting too long. She still cares about him. Take care of yourself. Back then, of course, letters were eventually delivered, so... I'm sure that breakup letter absolutely, you know, um, led to him being totally, totally not unhinged when he came back, except he ends up killing a couple people, including her, stabs her and the guy that she's with, with a pitchfork, just says, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. I would have laughed if he had said that. But anyway, um, I did laugh at the fact how they had all the vintage clothes and it just screamed, hey, we ran all these vintage clothes and cars and damn it, we're going to use them. Wasn't it great how there were only white people in 1945? Man, nothing but white people here in this. <laughs> um, the guy did coerce her into making out in the gazebo, and I was a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, coerce people. If they don't want to be with you, if they don't want to make out with you, doing that is not exactly great. They don't need convincing. Just let it be natural, you sick freaks. Slam in Avalon Bay in 1980, where <laughs> they're having... They're having their dance, and there we go. We're having a dance after 35 years of nothing bad happening at that college. There's a weird shopkeeper guy who could be the killer. He's not. 
There's a weird guy named Otto Hahn, not Otto Vaughn, not Otto Von Hess, not to be confused with old territorial wrestlers. Weird, creepy guy that does deliveries. It's not him. It's not Major Chatham, who is confined to a wheelchair, so obviously it's not him. You know who it is? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you in a minute. Even though if you've seen the movie, you know <clears throat> that 1980s hair was just absolutely out of control. So, anyway, this sheriff decides he's going to go on vacation. He's going to go on vacation. I haven't... I'm leaving you in charge, Mark London. I trust you. I trust a man named Mark London. London McDonald had a, didn't have a farm, so no E-I-E-I-O. Nevertheless, they do like each other, but there's the fact that Mark London, of course, is flirty because with a name like Mark London, how could you not flirt with everything in sight? Um... The killer ends up getting ready for war, I guess. He dresses in military fatigues, has the thing covered over his face, and has a hat on, or the helmet on, has a knife, has all that stuff. And I see it's okay when a guy in military fatigue stalks a girl in the shower in a college, but when I do that... So, alright. There's a guy named Carl who shows up, and he's going to get with the girl that's in the shower. And he starts to take off his clothes, and he's looking around the room. He doesn't somehow, despite the fact he looks around the room in a complete 360 direction, or looks in basically every direction, he doesn't see the killer that ends up directly behind him, stabs him through the head and out the throat, and he's somehow doing this, and then his eyes go white, like he's suddenly possessed by the ghost of the killer. It was a bit weird how they did that, but good makeup effects nevertheless. So they're both killed in the shower. Well, actually, she's killed in the shower with a pitchfork. And that is how hot water can feel. It can feel like a, a pitchfork stabbing into your gut. <clears throat> so what it comes down to is Pam and Mark London. All hail Mark London. Pam McDonald and Mark London, <clears throat> which sounds like a terrible Scarecrow Mrs. King knockoff, decide to investigate, because why not? For they are Pam Donald and Mark London, and we must forever be grateful to them. We are not worthy, Pam Donald and Mark London. Okay, I'm done saying that. They just keep investigating. This is after, of course, the uh, major, who's confined to a wheelchair, grabs her dress and rips part of her dress. And he says, get in my Jeep. I'll be right back. Oh! And the tension noises and the echoey music were starting to test my patience. This movie only had a budget of a million dollars. And I always say only, but this was a few years after Halloween. And Halloween got a lot more out of about 350 to 400 grand. <laughs> this had... Basically, almost three times that budget and couldn't do much with it. It did have cool makeup effects. And I think half the budget probably went to the vintage stuff. Um, the major They're investigating in the Major's house because he's not there anymore. We don't know what the hell happened to him. And suddenly they find diaries and they find portraits. And, geez, the Major's wife looks an awful, an awful lot... Is he the Major's wife or somebody's wife looks an awful lot like Pam? Hmm. Also, the sheriff decided to take off and leave Mark London in charge. Because the sheriff says, you're Mark London, I leave you in charge. I'm going to go off on a fishing trip. Okay, guys, yeah, the sheriff. It's the sheriff doing the killings. Why? Because he was the boyfriend from before. And he's insane. He doesn't want to have a dance cause flashbacks. And also, he's a war veteran. And you know what? I mean, even if he was like 22 or 23 when this happened, he would be at almost 60 and he, him accomplishing whatever. I don't know. So basically what ends up happening is they keep investigating. There was one point where Mark London, because he cannot wander upstairs very well <clears throat> or very fast, it went it took almost a minute to go up two flights of stairs. I fucking counted. It was insane. Um, there's a diary with a dead rose and more pictures that look an awful lot like Pam. Mm. And then there's one. There, there's this dance going on. Everybody gets locked in at this dance because this prowler is on the loose. So seemingly these people are locked in the hall forever, forever. We don't know if they ever come out because we never, after a few scenes, we never actually see them come out. For all we know, the Prowler decided to gas the place and they're dead. But this one girl goes swimming just before they lock that place down and apparently they hit the microphone in the cereal box somewhere on Mars because it was really echoey. And he kicks her and then stabs or kills her with a knife because why not? And then the teacher gets killed. The teacher is pretty hot, I gotta say. Um, I mean, I don't remember the actress's name, but she was pretty hot. So, then everybody just... 
Everybody decides, okay, we're just going to do whatever the hell we want. At one point, this creepy shopkeeper shows up and says, we never had any problems. Now there's a bunch of kids in the cemetery doing some weird shit. What are they doing? I don't know. I just heard them. <clears throat> and then I've always found out, of course, that when it comes to uh, having conversations with a girl that you want to make out with, make sure to have those conversations next to a huge speaker that is currently plugged in and pumping music. Best way to have a conversation. I also wonder how much money the studio owed this band because they were playing a lot of their music. Their music wasn't bad, but it was painfully generic. It's like if the Cars gave up and just you know, pumped out generic songs. So there's an open or there's an open grave. It turns out it's Rose's grave, but Lisa's body's in there. Not Lisa, a, name, a character so renowned I actually had to struggle to remember who the hell she was in this. So. He calls uh, Mark London, for he is only one man, he cannot do everything, calls the state police. They live inside of my head. The state police, they are down the street. They will catch somebody, and they cut the creep that was a red herring. There was actually a story about a guy that had uh, killed somebody, stolen his ride a little bit up the road, but they caught him. So it couldn't have been him that killed him. Eh, too many pronouns, pal. Come with me if you want to be stupid. That's what I wrote down about this because they got in the Jeep. We got about 15 minutes left. They're wandering around the house. Oh boy, more wandering. And we don't actually know if Mark London gets killed because he he's just off camera. Except then we do find out, wait, no, he didn't because he's suddenly there in the last few minutes. But they in, they they implicate, you know, or they in, in, they just infer that he is getting that he gets killed, and then suddenly, like in a power outage, the brief power outage stuff comes back on. Who clicked the power? What's happening? This prowler just then just decides to destroy all this furniture and destroy all this stuff. Templeton's uh, cousin shows up in the form of a giant, giant rat that looked like it just wanted to go home and eat cheese. Assuming a rat has a house in this economy, even in the 80s, a rat could afford an apartment, an apartment that is. But... This auto guy shows up, this auto Han guy shows up and shoots whoever it is in the military fatigues. And then he gets shot because that guy, the killer, had his own sawed-off shotgun. And she manages, Pam manages to stab him, and suddenly he's all, ah, 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 going around like this. I don't know what the hell's going on. Ah, ah. But then he's, like, gagging, and he takes his mask off, and it's the sheriff. Why is it the sheriff? And then he blows himself away by grabbing his own sawed off and making her pull the trigger. Or pulling the trigger with her fingers, I don't know. And his head blows up in a really humorous way. And then Mark London, hooray, Mark London is alive. Thank God. I don't know what I would have been able to do with my life. Even though I just discovered Mark London about, oh, I don't know, 90 minutes ago. And the water had been running in the shower the whole night. Where those two people got killed in the shower, or the one girl got killed with the pitchfork, and the other guy got killed with the knife through his head, he got put in the shower. That shower's been raining the whole night. That water bill for the college is going to be insane. <clears throat> but Pam's clearly losing it and grabs an, oh my God, I know Carl, Carl. And then actually he's fine. He had the whites of his eyes, assuming he was a zombie, I guess. And that's it. It just ends. The movie really didn't have a whole lot to it. It started fine. It was okay with a setup. And then it was just, I don't mind if you don't have an explanation for the killer, but this didn't have a explanation for a lot of things. Stuff just happened. The movie kind of peered out and fell and broke its goddamn legs and barely dragged itself across the finish line. Then it just gave up. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.